Mm-hmm. Last guy we're going to talk about is Malik Elzey. As you can see, different ranking profile than than the other guys. Rivals has him ranked number 199. 247 Sports, I believe, has him as a four-star, but an unranked guy. Uh, ESPN and On3, both him have, have him as a three-star recruit. Uh, thoughts on, just really from that rankings profile for Malik Elzey, what are your thoughts on that, Ryan? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I mean, we've seen a couple get a couple players where it's been kind of a wide range. I Malik's an uh, interesting player because I think that you see a lot of the flashes, and we'll kind of get into some of the raw tools he has. But I, I, I would think for me, top two fifty type of kid, right? Like I think that he should mm-hmm. definitely be ranked. Um, but I understand why there's a little bit of a, a range, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I do think, like a couple of these other guys, I think there's a little bit of a projection with Malik Elzey, but I do think that there is upside to be had mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I think 250-ish is where I have him as well, and and we'll show. And there's something else about him I want to I want to get your opinion on from the film. I actually think he's a kid that maybe if you got him as part of a five-man class – Maybe he's a kid that could flip over and play some defense down the road, and we'll we'll show that on the film. But let's let's dive into the film of Malik Elzey because uh, I, I I do want to get this thing wrapped up because I know people want to get to the bat. Some people want to get to the basketball game. I can't. I'm ashamed of you all that you want to stop watching film of stud receivers to watch basketball. Uh, here's the one thing that stands out: he's a big boy, and he's not yes. like you know six five two fifteen. He's like six three. 190, 195, he's listed that, but he's strong. He plays big. But you mm-hmm. also see from this clip, he, he doesn't really he doesn't really have great suddenness, but he knows how to play, and he's got really good ball skills, and he's big. He's a really good-sized kid, really good catch radius. He's got good arm length. I don't think his, his arm length quite matches his height, yeah. at least kind of what I've seen. But it's still good. It's just not – it's not – kind of what some of those other guys are here is in the boundary he, he does have clean hands you know we talk, we talk about right that right there like i just i some people have said he's a speed like a faster guy he's another one that i just i haven't seen it on film yet he reminds me yeah. a lot of miles boykin in that regards mm-hmm. you know where he's just not he's you can see it right there like he's he's a long-limbed kid long legs he's a little bit lumbering in regards to that, but then he covers good ground. Like I would have never guessed Miles would have ran a four four two. I remember when he was getting ready for the for the combine in his last two years, I'd have people in their name say, This kid's a four four kid. I'm like, I no, he's not. No, there's no way. Because he didn't show four four, you know what I mean, on the field. But then he goes I, out I and runs a four four two, and you're like, Phew, you know, all right, there you go. Not that Miles was slow, but he just didn't show four four two. Um, right. Right. But and that's kind of you know, that's kind of Malik is is I love the body control there be able to flip his hips and make that catch. You know, good, real strong kid. I just don't see great, great length. But he's got really good focus and concentration, though, Ryan. He's a tough – and you're going to see it on defense, too. He's a tough kid. He's a tough he, – he's what you'd think a Chicago kid should be, right? Like Northern kid, you know, Chicago kid. He's got some toughness to him. He's got some strength to him. Uh, you know, his Here's him playing defense, picking a pass off. I think I think the defensive layer to, to this recruiting could be kind of interesting, right? Because like mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you've only seen some of the flash plays like this one, for instance. But mm-hmm. as a six three rangy safety, mm-hmm. might be interesting to kind of maybe a rover, you know, yeah, guy that could come down and play rover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see it here. That's a nice downhill speed here. You know, mm-hmm. decent pedal. The technique's not great. But you see light light on his feet and then plants and drives hard on his football. I mean, he picks that. That play looked a lot easier than it should have been. Like, the quarterback starts to throw and Malik's not really in his – like, the, he's just now planting. He drives downhill in a hurry yep. on that throw. In a hurry. So he might he may end up I mean we always talk about Ronan Hannafin in this vein right like he's a mm-hmm. wide receiver if you take him maybe but also right. he has the flexibility where like you can go up a number potentially at wide receiver technically but also he might be a different position I wouldn't count Malik Elzey out in that similar vein like I think there's projectability to both sides of the ball with this type of kid Let me ask you this question this is one of his better get offs Part of the thing that intrigues me about Malik is I'd be really curious to see him in person because if he's a legit 195, then I start asking the question of 
if he's 195 with the frame you're seeing right there, there's mm-hmm. 30 more pounds you can put on that kid. Sure. And all of a sudden he's Tommy Trumbull. That, that's fair. That's fair. And, and you know, yeah, no, I get, I mean, and then the possibilities are endless for what you could do with right. that kid as a move piece. Yeah. I agree flex kind of flex guy can be a lead blocker can line up in the slot can still line up outside. Cause he can still play outside receiver. So he, he's an intriguing player to me. I don't, I don't grade him as high. I mean, he's the, of the six we've broken down, he's the sixth lowest ranked for me. Sure. Uh, just me personally, I would probably not take him right now unless you do feel he can do other things. But I also would understand if they did want to take him because he does offer – what the heck? What the, is this like – this is kind of like the the way that you would expect. If you saw all 22 film from <laughs> uh, any given Sunday, this is what it would look yep. like. What, what, what happened to the lights? <laughs> it's like – I just got a dark fill, man. Don't throw a fade down there. I'm not gonna see the football. <laughs> what the heck happened there? But he is a, he's a he's a physical kid. He's a strong kid. He's a, he's a, you get good hands. You know he he does not tuck the ball at all. Like I got to work with him on that. But that you know a little bit a little bit of swagger there. I, I that's part of swagger I don't love. Get in the freaking end zone. You know what I mean? Like that's like okay now you, yeah. you've crossed the line for me. Get in the freaking end zone. You know what I mean? Like. Yep. Um, but here he is coming down on defense, making a hit. I I can work with I, that. I'd I really want to see. I'd really want to see game film of him playing defense. Yep. Like if I could see game film of him playing defense, that might kind of say, okay, take this. He might be the Ronan. He might be Ronan Hannafin at that point in time. You know what I mean? It's possible. So, yeah that 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 would be kind of my that would be kind of my thing because like honestly, some of the more impressive clips I've seen of him in this game were or in this clip were on defense. Well, that, that, and that's my point, Brian, is like mm-hmm. I, he's caught my attention more for the flashes on defense than necessarily for the flashes on offense, which I'm OK with. Like if this kid's right. developmental safety I, I, or right. rover, I, I'm, yeah. I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't it. see the speed for safety for the same reason he's kind of my lower grade, lowest graded receiver on here. But I see a tough kid. I see a strong kid. I see a kid that can can use get a lot more, a lot better coaching. Right here he's playing safety, making a pick over top. You know, I that that would be the thing is I'd want to here's the other thing. I want to see how big he actually is in person. You know, again, listen to 6'3, 195, but a guy that um, you know, I'd want to see just how just what kind of size he has. Yep. And I mean he's a he's a very physical player, whether it's offensively or defensively. You see that he's you see that he's able to win at the catch point. After the catch, he brings physicality on defense. He brings physicality. There is a, there's, there's definitely a, a demeanor to him for, as far as just being a tough football player. That's good body control right there. That's one of his mm-hmm. better catches. That that's you see that you see the radius right there. Like that's that's again doesn't have super super long arms, but he can extend, and he's got good yeah. body control. You know, I, sure. I, I like that. I like that. I kind of get some Miles Boykin vibes with them too. Yeah. I think you mentioned yeah. that a little bit. Like I get yeah. those vibes. Chicago kid. I think Miles is longer. Yeah. But very similar. Because Miles, you know, ended up being like what two, what was he at Notre Dame? Like 210, 215 is what he checked in yeah. at. Somewhere he, like that. Yeah. He was kind of a he had a very similar frame, like longer, but had a very similar frame. This kid's tough. This is a tough football player. It's the thing about Malik that I like. He's a tough kid. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, my thing is, is, is he the kind of kid that as a wide receiver, you go beat Bama with that? That's, that's my, that's my thing. I don't, I don't know if, if that's the case, but if he can be Miles Boykin, you take him. If you think he's Miles Boykin, you take him. You know, I mean, that, that would be my thing. And then like you said, I I, I can can see a fifth guy. uh... Yeah, I could see Coach Mason liking him as maybe a little bit yes. of a kick coverage, punt coverage type yeah. of guy, though. <laughs> yeah. Definitely see that. What's up with those lights, man? It's, that's bugging me out, seeing that dark state. Like, how do they keep playing on that? Right. That was, that was one of the many things I hated about any given Sunday. It's like those weird <laughs> dark night games. What is this? <laughs> so strange. One of the many things I hated about that game. Or the movie. I, I have said, though, that is the most true, like the f- football action. Like when they would show like those, like just the chaos of, of being on the field. I thought that was the most realistic thing. Yep. I agree. 
I like this. This is working the zone. Again, this is that flex tight end role. I mean, not, not a great route, but the feel for finding that soft spot. And then as soon as he catches it, he's phew, go make a guy miss and get vertical. You know, I, some things I like about Malik, you know, I just, I just question that, that he's that guy that Notre Dame has been getting for years that I just is really good player, but then has a little bit trouble kind of separating and making the kind of plays against Ohio state and Clemson and Georgia and Alabama that you have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's my, that's my thing. Cause it's fair. Yeah. But it's, he's also a hard kid to say no to. Like if you're, that's, that's the tough part about it. I was like, do you really want to say no to this kid with the, some of the different things he can do? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And he's also going to be on campus this weekend, right? There's another one finding that soft spot. And there's, there's, it's not like he's far from a finished product too. Like, I mean, there's a lot to work with there. That's the other intriguing part about him. It's not like, oh, well, you know, he's close to his, his peak. He's not. I mean, just technically speaking, he, there's a lot of room for improvement, just technically speaking. Mm-hmm. Yep. On top, on top of obviously filling mm-hmm. out his frame and all doing all those mm-hmm. things. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because he's there's definitely room for him to fill that frame out. I mean, he's not like Jaden Greathouse in that regards. And that's why I say if, if he's a legit 195, mm-hmm. then then that that adds some really unique intrigue to him in this regards. I like this play. This is again, this is a this is him on defense. Where is he at the snap? He's the backside. Oh, is he backside safety, maybe. I mean, if he is, then he he picks up this crosser pretty well and is able to to recover and make yeah. the play the heck is yeah. going on there uh, is he returning a punt i guess no he's yeah no. it's like it looked like they were lining up the punt or something and then faked it yeah they're lining up the punt and then faked it and he was going to be the punt returner he comes down and, i mean that's a nice fake. form i mean that's that's face in the chest i mean sink mm-hmm. your hips drive through contact that's so, and he forces the fumble. That's my thing. Is like some of his, like if you're going to rank his top ten plays, I'd say six of them are on defense. Well, you're talking about Rover, <laughs> you know right? I mean? He's yeah. right, Rover right there. Yep. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it also backs up your point of like Brian Mason's probably going to be the guy stand on the table, like pounding the table for this guy. Yeah. You know, I don't know is he offense or defense, and Brian Mason like special teams. That's where he's going to be. Special teams. We got 85 scholarships. You can give me one. You can give me one. I mean- isn't this a kid though? You could see for like a couple years early on in his career where he's just like a dynamic special teams coverage guy. Mm-hmm. And like, yes. you could just see it. Yes. Did I turn the sound on? I did turn the sound on. Yeah. It, that's what I'm saying. Like he get, when I get fired up about this kid, it's him playing defense. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Look at that change of direction on this, Ryan. This is why I asked you at the beginning of the thing is could this kid play defense? Now, that's not the greatest form tackle, but I do like the change of direction. This next tackle is a lot better. I like that change of direction. Like, you put that at Rover, mm-hmm. you know, like all of a sudden you're like, hmm, look at that. And that kid stops. You know, I mean. <sighs> and like you said, if he's 195, man, he could easily be 220, like very right. easily. Right, rangy. You know, I mean, look, technically has a lot to improve on on defense too, but. I'm telling you, man, there's some stuff about this kid I really like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll Let's swagger a couple to him more. on defense too. Yeah. We'll Here he's just playing linebacker. Good read and rant. Look at look at that. Look at the look his ability kind of work in space there. Good. I mean, he reads the, he he reads the run perfectly. That he doesn't get faked mm-hmm. at all by the bubble stuff they're doing. Makes that guy miss and just a nice tackle. It's a nice form tackle. Again, look, look, I mean, it's good, good downhill closing speed, Ryan. So again, when I start getting fired up about Malik Elzey, it's, it's really watching him on defense. Like I think his athleticism projects even better as like a Rover type of guy than it does. And maybe you try him at safety and see if he moves well enough, but if not, then, you know, you put him on, you put him on defense, you put him at Rover and let him, let him run around. You know what I mean? But then if you you have injuries at receiver or if you have injuries that are, you know, you maybe you don't get the guys you get. You know, he's the kind of guy that let's say you just take him as an athlete. Like, let's say you're, you're just like, is it going to be LZ or Hannafin or maybe both, right? You get a kid like that and and you think he's going to be a, a, a defensive player or and all of a sudden you say, boy, we didn't we didn't get a guy. We lost a guy late. Somebody flipped a guy that we had. And and, you know, as a coaching staff, we meaning like looking at it from the coach's standpoint and you say, hey, you know, we can now move this kid over here, or you take him as a receiver and you don't get that third linebacker that you want. You don't get that rover that you want. 
And all of a sudden you say, hey, look, we got five receivers. We can move him over there. And I think that's the intriguing thing about a guy like Malik Elzey is if it's just as a pure receiver, I'm not sure I'm taking him right now. Because you're in mm-hmm. such good position with Braden James and, and, and you know, Jaden Greathouse and Carnell Tate and you want to see how things are going Rodney Gallagher, you're not – those guys aren't taking the same spots. If it's just as a receiver, I don't know if I'm taking him right now. But if if you believe he can legitimately maybe help you at m- multiple places, flex tight end, uh, maybe he, he takes the place of a second tight end in this class kind of thing. Or uh, maybe yeah. he's that athlete that kind of play multiple positions. There's there's going to – there would be – if I was at Notre Dame, there would be – I would imagine there would be some really interesting – staff recruiting conversations when it comes to our total numbers and where Malik Elzey falls in that, in that line. 